Our last cruise was delayed getting back to port and we're getting ready to head off to Antarctica. So let's talk about it. Hey cruisers, welcome back to another cruise news update from Cruise Report. Now, I'm going to just tell you a little bit about what happened on our Holland America cruise toward the end. I did do some vlogs along the way, but uh, some interesting thing happened on the last day of the cruise. We learned that the tropical storm Nicole was going to interfere with returning back to Port Everglades uh, because the storm was set to hit the uh, east coast of Florida, which is old news. Everybody already knows that more, more than likely if you follow the cruise news. So what we had to do was we had to kind of divert, go down sort of the Bahamian area to get away from the storm. Captain did a great job of keeping the ship away from any uh, uncomfortable waves or swells. Uh, we never even, we might have gotten a little rain that last day, but it was actually a pretty comfortable ride the whole way. We never really experienced any effects, any ill effects of that storm. So on our final day, which was actually 11 days, our 10-day cruise turned into an 11-day cruise. We got an extra day at sea. And I did get some comments from some of you on Facebook and Instagram saying basically, hey, just enjoy that extra day at sea. Well, most of that day was spent trying to figure out how we were going to get home because all of our flights were going to change. Now, if you lived in Florida, it wasn't a big deal. You're just going to drive home from the port. But we live in Dallas-Fort Worth. So fortunately, we had booked our air through Holland America. And just a big hats off to the travel team at Holland America. They really, really did an excellent job uh, in a very you know, confusing situation. And, you know, they nobody's ever really set up for something like this. I'm sure they've done it before. But it's uncomfortable and it requires a lot of extra work on their part. But basically, we originally were going to fly from Fort Lauderdale back to DFW nonstop. They seemed to feel like there was a possibility that our ship would not get back to Fort Lauderdale till as late as 2 o'clock in the afternoon which, uh, you know, we didn't see any indi indication of that on the ship. Uh, they re The only indication we saw was they uh, had scheduled the ship to start disembarking at 10.30 in the morning. I believe it was 10.30, 10.15, something like that. So we were kind of going by that. The captain never said anything. They never posted any information saying that we wouldn't be in until the afternoon. But apparently the travel team at Holland America was taking extra caution, making sure uh, that we had plenty of time. As it turns out, we would have been very easily been able to get on that 519 flight nonstop back to Dallas. But nevertheless, they made reservations. But originally they said they could get us to fly to Charlotte from Fort Lauderdale about 715. We'd be end up, end up back home maybe around midnight. Uh, midnight, 12.30 a.m., something like that, which we weren't too excited about. But if that's all that's available, we figured they did the best they could. Then we got a message saying that, no, that we, we didn't book it in time. We didn't get you on that flight. Our only other alternative would be for us to fly from Fort Lauderdale all the way to Los Angeles. That's like a five-hour flight. And then... Uh, take an overnight flight from Los Angeles all the way back to DFW. Turns out we wouldn't even get home to like six o'clock in the morning. That was not exciting for us. Uh, but fortunately, fortunately, they pulled some strings. They got out their magic lamp. I don't know what they did, but they were able to go back and get us booked on that flight to Charlotte and then to Dallas, get home around midnight. 
once we got to the airport, we were going to see, because we got to the airport early, maybe by 11 o'clock in the morning. I mean, we were there maybe 1130. So, you know, we had all day long, we were going to spend in the Fort Lauderdale airport, not something you really want to do because the Fort Lauderdale airport is one of the worst in the country. I mean, it's really ugly. So basically, we went to the American Airlines desk to check in and we said, is there any way we can get on an earlier flight? Well, apparently, if you book, if you ha if you're booked on a connecting flight like to Charlotte and then to DFW, you can only fly standby on an earlier flight. You can't rebook, but you can fly on standby and you can't fly standby on a nonstop flight, only on another connecting flight. So we got on the standby list for, I believe it was a five o'clock in the afternoon flight uh, to Charlotte. And then we got on standby for a maybe seven o'clock flight back to DFW would get us home maybe around nine o'clock at night, 830, something like something like that. Eight o'clock. I don't know. I don't remember the times, but it was better than what we had, what Holland had booked us. Even flying standby, we still got to retain our original reservations. So we didn't lose our locked in reservation at seven o'clock to Charlotte and whatever it was, 10 o'clock or something back to DFW. So we did that. We got on the standby list. We were able to get on that five o'clock, whatever it was, flight from Fort Lauderdale to Charlotte. We got to Charlotte and there were very few seats left on the 715 flight back to Dallas, maybe three seats. And we got the last two seats on standby. Didn't have great seats, but uh, we took it and we were actually home by nine o'clock at night. Worked out great. So thank you to Holland America for working all that out, getting that done for us. Uh, much appreciated. Now, on our last day on the ship, we were just getting ready to go to dinner when the captain came over the, the loudspeaker, the PA system, to let us know that somebody had seen a vessel or a boat or a, yeah, a boat, basically, or a raft off the port side of the ship with people on it. And the waves were pretty high for a small boat. Not for us. We didn't feel any motion. But these were probably 12, 15 foot swells. And so the captain said they were going to turn the ship around and go investigate. They did. We And I'm sure many of you have already heard this story. They found a, a like a styrofoam raft that some people in Cuba had built by hand, I suppose. And they were basically stranded and taking on water. Uh, the captain deployed a, I think it was a tender. I think they sent a tender out to pick them up and rescue them, brought them on board, gave them food and water and uh, medical attention. Everybody was fine. I believe it was 13 men and one woman. And so uh, this is the first time we've been on a ship that has been involved in any kind of a rescue attempt at sea. And it turned out good. And, you know, the moral of the story is if we hadn't have been delayed by uh, Tropical Storm Nicole, we would have never been there on that 11th day. We would have already been back in Fort Lauderdale. They would have been taking on new passengers. We would have never been in that part of the ocean. So possibly uh, everything worked out the way it was supposed to. So we're happy that everybody is safe. And I believe the Coast Guard is going to meet the ship and they were going to pick up the people and then do whatever they do, probably send them home, unfortunately, back to Cuba. So anyway, everything worked out good. We got home. Uh, we did get an extra day on the ship. I'm sure it was a nightmare for the people coming in for the next cruise because I'm sure there were flight delays. And of course, the ship wasn't there. But anyway, if you were on that next cruise, by the way, put it in the comments down below and let us know how that all got handled. I'd be real interested to know. And this is a good time to remind you, if you like this kind of content, if you're enjoying this video, please take a second to click that little subscribe button down below. And don't forget that notification bell so that YouTube will let you know when we come out with new videos. OK, so let's move on to new items. We will be leaving this week to go to Antarctica. Actually, we fly from here to South America. And then I think there's a couple of charter flights before we get to where we embark the ship. Uh, this will be with Silver Sea on their brand new, well, brand new to them, Silver Endeavor. The ship was built in 2021. It was previously the Crystal Endeavor, you may remember. 
and Silver Sea acquired that ship and converted it to Silver Endeavor. And it is a luxury ship, expedition ship, holds 200 passengers and 200 crew, a one-to-one -one crew to guest ratio. I'm not sure we've ever been on a ship that had a one-to-one -one crew to guest ratio. So that will be very interesting. We'll actually be on the very first revenue sailing for that cruise. Now we will be guests of Silver Sea, but we're going to be updating you every day. If we can, if Wi-Fi allows, we'll be updating you from the ship through Instagram and Facebook. I don't know if the internet's going to be good enough to allow us to upload any videos. We'll try, but we usually can get things to go on Instagram and Facebook. So if you're not following us on Instagram and Facebook, please do so because we post stuff all day long live well, more or less live, from the ship. So we're very excited about getting back to Antarctica. If you've never considered an expedition cruise, um, you might want to because they really are a lot of fun. They're very different. It's not like your typical cruise experience. It's very, very destination focused. And we're just very excited to be on there. And since we're on the very first sailing, this will be one of the first places you're going to get information about this new Silver Endeavor. So we're very excited to be back on Silver Sea, and we're very excited to see this new Silver Endeavor, and we're very excited to be back in Antarctica. We've only been there once. It was about 10 years ago. It was with a completely different cruise line, different ship, but uh, it was an amazing experience. And we know that the way Silver Sea does things, uh, they do a great job with expeditions. They do a great job just overall with cruises. It's, it's one of the ultimate cruise lines in the world. You just can't, you can't beat it. They're amazing. So we're very, very excited about that. So make sure you're following along with us and get that up-to-date information from Antarctica. So thanks for joining me today. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. That really does help our rankings with YouTube. Much appreciated, and I look forward to seeing you soon on the next Cruise Report update. And remember, until then, smooth sailing.